Hello, hello, my friends. Amy R. here with Prairie Paper and Ink. Welcome back to my face and my card making space. And my card for today's blog hop for the Pretty Pink Posh September release. There are multiple days of blog hops. I will have info about the hop and all the links to the other makers today in my blog post, which is linked directly below the video. Definitely worth checking out because there's going to be tons of fabulous inspiration. This was another amazing release. We got another add-on to the um, winter mug, coffee mug sets. There have been many additions and I'll have a link. I've done up a list with the original set, which is this little, you can't really see the whole thing, but the winter mug, which came out last year, the year before, came out a while ago. I've done many videos using this set with the add-ons and I turned them into a playlist because I just keep adding to them as I make them. So I'll have that at the end of this video as well. But yeah, there's a whole bunch of different add-ons and I've talked about this a lot. I love when there's like a set, whether it be a die set or a stamp set, and then over time the brand will keep releasing like add-ons for it for different seasons and themes and all the things and then you can just pick and choose. You know, it's like, ooh, I could make cards for this or this you know and yeah I was I lost my mind when I saw the newest add-on I haven't even had a chance to use the Halloween one it's sold out so quickly I'm hoping I can still do a Halloween one that came out in last month's release hoping to do that soon no promises I, I can't keep up I can't keep up anyway I did a whole bunch of die cutting and kept it simple in a sense, I didn't do like ink blending or anything. I just did die cutting. I did a little bit of hot foiling. I used one of these stencils with some lunar paste. And then I just added um, some interest with a white gel pen. And I didn't do splatter. I did the white gel pen instead of splatter. So look at me mixing it up a little bit. <laughs> Anyway, I'll have a link to the release. I'll have a link to all the supplies I used in the description box below. Definitely head on over to my blog after you're done watching though to um, get to everybody else and all the info and fun things. And yeah, just keep watching and I will show you guys how I made this card. So generally, if I'm going to be doing a die cut heavy card, which I have talked about more and more lately, that I really love. I love doing die cutting and cards with just die cuts because there's so many fun ones out there now with all this detail and yada yada yada. Anyway, when I'm doing a card that involves lots of different pieces, you know, all sorts of die cuts, I try to get everything um, ready to go first. So I chose my color combo so I pulled out a bunch of different um, bits of cardstock and this is why I keep all my scraps. I always go for the scraps first before I, you know, cut into a fresh sheet of cardstock because 99% of the time I've got a scrap that's going to work and then I can just die cut that. So I get all my little um, pieces of cardstock and the dies I want to use with them and I make just kind of little piles depending on whether I'm going to be die cutting something multiple times. So several of these dies I want to die cut multiples of or I also have to do like more than one pass because with um, specifically with Pretty Pink Posh wafer dies she has them combined. So like this little mushroom that I'm cutting the pieces out for the top and the base are one wafer die you know like they're connected and I actually really like that because it saves me the hassle of you know going especially with like large die sets like this I'm using two and I'll get to that in a second but it keeps me from like losing random wafer dies you know because sometimes there, there's a lot to keep track of and I'm using two three technically die sets here I'm using the the winter mugs the original that's the coffee mug that I've already die cut and the little like oval piece from that original set for the the coffee and then I'm using the fall mug additions and I'm using some of the dies from the fall cornucopia die set because there's there was some real there's just so many I, again this release was amazing but yeah the like 
cornstalk wafer die there from the cornucopia set. I was like, this is just, I don't know what it is. I was like, this is perfection. And there's all mushrooms and all the things. So anyway, got it all, you know, prepped, did all my piles. And then I did all my die cutting. And you can't see it on camera, but I got just an absolute disaster going on off camera, you know. But everything's just kind of piled up and waiting. And then I decided for my main sentiment, I'm going to use the um, Thankful Script hot foil plate. So I already had my Glimmer hot foil machine heating up. And I went with um, gold Glimmer hot foil. So I trimmed a piece down to just slightly larger than the hot foil plate. And I trimmed down just a scrap of Nina Desert Storm cardstock. And what I like to do is I take just little tiny pieces of tape of the like little Spellbinders narrow tape and I tape the foil to the cardstock, pretty side of the foil up, and then I take my foil plate, so in this case it's the thankful script, and you put that face down onto the pretty side and I tape that as well. This just keeps everything in place and keeps things from shifting and whether or not that's like the game changer but it sure seems to be for me anyway once i started like taping them into place it just seemed to work so my machine was heated up i when the green the middle green light goes solid i put the my little sandwich combo there the the plate and the foil and the cardstock onto the um glimmer hot foil machine press the timer let it heat up this part right here this is real time this is how slow i run it through because i talk about this i run it through my platinum six machine very slowly just slow I don't go back and forth um you generally don't want to do that when you're hot foiling because there's a good chance it will shift and then you'll get like wonky results but I just roll it through just nice and slow because the glimmer hot foil machine gives it the heat the die cut machine gives it the pressure so you just run it through slow and like perfection I don't always get like perfect perfect results and I'm fine with it but man, the times where it foils, you know, just perfectly, it's just, it's like the angels are singing and everything's right in the world. <laughs> uh, I need to get out of this garage, I think, so <laughs> a little bit more. I've been, I've been in here a lot. Anyway, anyway, after I was done hot foiling it, I used the outline wafer die from the Thankful Shadow. Um, if you don't, like, if you're not into hot foiling, the Thankful Shadow wafer die actually has the word as well, so you could just die get it. You could skip the hot foiling completely, but you guys know I like the shiny. Hence, also me doing this. So I took another piece of Nina Desert Storm cardstock and I put it onto my Wallflower grip mat. And I'm using the Posh, Pretty Pink Posh Deco Leaves stencil. Love this stencil. I'm, I'm, oh, I am really loving Pretty Pink Posh's stencil. She's been coming out with so many good ones. Oh. Anyway, stuck that over the cardstock and I used... Um, lunar paste in slippery when wet and just apply that over the whole stencil with my palette knife people have been asking why i don't have um press and seal on these i just haven't got around to it yet i'll get there eventually and i'll seal it up and it'll be good to go but anyway applied that and then removed the the background carefully from there and set that aside to dry and then i just took the whole mat and my stencil to the sink and i just wash it with just a little bit of soap and water they're good to go so that was all done. I let that background dry. And then I got to assembling all of these um, die cuts. And there wasn't a whole ton of assembling to do. And all of it was pretty, all of it was very simple. It just made sense. Like the, these little corn stalks, it's just you would adhere the one piece and then the other piece. And like I said in the intro, I just used solid color cardstock. I didn't do, you know, ink blending. You could totally just, and I've shown it in many videos, die cut everything from just white cardstock and then use your inks or your markers, whatever coloring medium you want to use. And you can add all the texture and definition and color that way. Totally works. I just was in a mood to use solid color cardstock. Why not? So assembling these was just simple because everything was connected and I kind of kept them together. And then the only things I did a little differently was like with this pumpkin, I die cut a couple of the leaves from the fall mug additions. And then the little, the little curly like viney bits, those are from the, and the pumpkin is too. Um, 
the fall cornucopia die set and the little curly bits are attached to there's a a bunch of grapes because you know cornucopia and grapes and all the things and I die cut those to add to my little pumpkin because I was like of course it needs that like how cute is that so I'd hear my little florals and then of course the mushrooms I get, I don't know what it is with me and like mushroom wafer dyes and I don't I don't I don't know it's just something I have decided to fixate on and I love them I think they're so cute and that little mushroom is adorable adorable the the bigger one is from the fall mug editions and then the little little baby mushrooms are from the fall cornucopia so they're just meant to be you know so adhered those together and then there's this little little berry sprig from the fall mug editions and same thing just added a little glue, adhered the little berries using my um, embellishment wand just to pick up those little die cut pieces after, which wasn't on camera, of course, because you guys couldn't see it, but I knocked one on the floor, spent a little bit of time, you know, crawling around trying to find that very dark red die cut, <laughs> little tiny berry. <laughs> you could also skip that. And, oh man, you could use little pearls. That would have looked really cute. These ideas always occur to me when I'm doing the voiceovers. And then I'll just share them with you guys because it's all done. I can't, I can't go back and fix it. But using little pearls would have been really cute. Anyway, I was going between in my head as I was assembling everything. I was like, mm, splatter, you know, because you guys know. Anyone who watches my videos for any length of time knows. It's just something I like to do. It would have looked great. I was dithering between like gold splatter or white splatter. And then I decided neither, shockingly, I know. And I just pulled out my white gel pen. And did that instead. And just added, again, little dots, little dots and lines. That's it. No rhyme or reason This with this especially. There is no light source. It's just do whatever you want. And it just gives that extra something on, you know, all these pieces of all these die cuts. But like there's already the, the texture and the definition from all the, the piercing and all of that. So it adds all that detail. And then the white gel pen just bumps it up again. But you could totally skip it and just do splatter. But I know a lot of people too are a little scared of the splatter. Trust me. Trust me. It's it's you, you, it's fun. And if you don't like it, that's that's totally fine. When I first started doing splatter, I always I was like, man, how do people do this? Like, how do they control it? You learn to embrace the the chaos. <laughs> and then the, like I oh the video hasn't come up yet. Oh. Yeah, when this video goes up, the other one will go up. Um, I'm just like, I'm, you guys, I'm like doing 30 things at once. But like with splatter, when I get stuff where I don't want, you know, there's there's a big blob or or things where I don't want it to be, you just cover that up. Cover it up with a die cut. Cover it up with an embellishment. You know, there's just, there's ways. But yeah, it does take a little bit of practice, but I like it. So if, but if that's not your thing, a gel pen is is a wonderful little tool and this is just my jelly roll 10 gel pen the same one i use when i do you know alcohol marker coloring and add little highlights and that sort of a thing and again my biggest tip uh with specifically white gel pens is just to use them somewhat consistently if it sits for like ridiculously long amounts like months and months and months on end they do start to dry out like more so in just in the because you know they have a ballpoint tip to them and that's where they'll dry out so you can scribble it on your hands and scribble it on cardstock to try and get it going again like warm it up in your hands especially like the ballpoint tip and that more often than not will get it going but the biggest thing is just to use it somewhat consistent even if you're not like actively making projects all the time um to every once in a while grab it and scribble it out a little bit you know just to keep it from drying out and I use mine consistently enough that I have not had a problem and I have been using this same white gel pen for ever. I can't even remember the last time I had to grab a new one. Anyway, I did all of that <laughs> and I heat embossed a little sentiment from the Sentiment Strips Fall set and I used uh, cream embossing powder for that and then set that aside. And then my card base is some ivory cardstock and I scored it at five and a half inches. So this will be a top folding A2 note card. And I put the card base onto my grip mat. I have my stencil that I cleaned off from all that paste and stuck that over it. And I just used a blending brush and Simon Says Stamps um, Latte Positively Saturated Ink. So just a nice light color of ink because as I always say, my intention on the, with the insides of cards is these are just extra. 
you know, I like to add little extra bits. I always like to finish the insides of my cards. It's just something I've done for ever, really, since the beginning of doing YouTube, I think, and even and even before that. So anyway, anything I add to the inside is just extra, and it's always added with the intention of me writing over it, because I get asked that a lot, like, where do you write? And I'm like, on top of it, I don't have a problem with that. So I did that little bit of stenciling on the inside. The panel that I use the paste on, I trimmed it down to like four inches by five and a quarter, just slightly smaller than the card base. And then I adhered it to the card base with craft tacky glue. And then I adhered all of these elements and I just used craft tacky glue and washi tape because the washi tape you're not going to see to like hold things in place and then the glue to hold everything down. I did not use any foam adhesive. Shocking, I know. <laughs> I decided I just didn't need it. Once I get everything adhered, there's just enough that it just wasn't needed, really. And yeah, the only thing I did extra is I die cut just some scraps with that outline, um, thankful shadow wafer die. I die cut a couple of scraps of that Nina Desert Storm cardstock and I adhered those behind the foiled one just to give the the sentiment a little bit more dimension because I was that was the only thing that I was actually going to like pop up with some foam adhesive and I was like why would I do that when I can just die cut a couple of scraps and we're good to go so got those adhered together and then um yeah assembled this card I, love, I don't know what it is I love this little scarf for the mug how cute is that and again, I didn't even use all the wafer dyes in the fall mug editions. There's like a little fox. There's like a little character you can add. You can either make it a fox or a cat. I think you can do both. I'm not sure. But it's for sure a fox. It's so cute. And there's like a little acorn. And there's a sentiment. Like, I, again, I didn't even use everything. Like, oh. But yeah, I was like fixating on the little scarf. Cause I'm like a scarf on a mug. I'm like, who thinks of that? I love it. I love it. Anyway adhered all my little bits and pieces just I'd kind of assembled things off camera and took a photo of it for reference because I always forget no matter what and then didn't reference the photo and then I also like some of this I ended up assembling and didn't realize I didn't even have my camera turned on because you know I'm a professional just that's just how it is but I got most of it really filmed thankfully <laughs> It was just the few extra little bits that I had forgot and then I adhered the the sentiment into place and then looked up and realized I wasn't filming. So I was like, I'll just turn the camera back on and you guys can watch me pretend to press in the sentiment because, again, I'm a professional. You, you learned a lot from that five second clip. Anyway, anyway. <laughs> uh, I did remember, though, to film this part. So I kept a, a few of the little die cuts um, aside and I adhered those to the inside with um, the sentiment just to just to finish it off you know so I adhered those with little dabs of craft tacky glue and once those are adhered this card is complete so I know I didn't add um, spotter and I didn't add any bling even the pretty pink posh came out with um, a few different colors a little confetti that I love but I decided not to I was like with all the die cuts and the background and the hot foiled sentiment and yeah, and all the texture from all the piercing detail. I just, I really enjoyed making this. And it just, it screams fall, which love, 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 love. So anywho, like I mentioned in the intro, I will have a link below the video to my blog post. All the info about the hop and the release and all the things will be in that blog post. I will have a supply list with links to all the supplies I use below as well. I'll have links to the playlist that I mentioned, all the things at the end of the video. So you can check that out below and at the end if you are interested. Thank you all so very much for taking the time to watch my videos, for thumbs upping and commenting. Subscribe if you haven't, I'd love to have you. And I'll see you all very soon in the next video. Bye.